Hi, my name is Philip Beither. I'm Senior Curator for Performing Arts here at the Walker Arts Center in Minneapolis. And with me is Rabia More, who's from uh, Beirut, Lebanon. And uh, the Walker is a part of a consortium that helped commission a new work called The Pixelated Revolution that we'll see on Saturday morning right. here at the Walker. And yeah. last night, we opened um, a work that is older, um, beautiful piece called Looking for a Missing Employee. Um, and that is running as part of our Out There Festival here 2012 at the Walker. Um, so I actually am going to start in reverse, not about last night, but, but about this brand new work that, you've, that you will be showing us um, called The Pixelated Revolution. And, and we're at a moment in time where obviously politically it's very uh, heated as this, there's great, uh, this great changes going on. The revolution is going on in Syria. Um, there's great violence uh, erupting and a lot of it is being uh, the, the death and, and, and um, violence perpetrated right. by the yeah. government on, on um, protesters or uh, that's happening on the streets um, uh, is being recorded by people's cell phones in a way that never in history had we been able to document right. ourselves yeah, um, yeah. the occurrences that are going on. And these images mm -hmm. have been proliferating throughout uh, the web. And w what prompted you to want to um, uh, grapple with those images, but also make a work, as you've said to me before, that is not a piece that is a p political advocacy piece in any way. Is not a taking. Is not is not taking that tact with the with the yeah, war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, <clears throat> pixelated revolution, uh, uh, as you said, like it's reflection about uh, actually these uh, videos uh, recorded by uh, by the. Syrian protesters right. uh, during the event that they are uh, themselves making, right. uh, creating and doing and living at the same time. And they are very strong uh, and uh, for me they are in a way unique because uh, we, we never, like in, in Egypt and in Tunis mm -hmm. and even in Libya and all these uh, countries where there was uh, uh, revolutions and still going on till now, actually. Yeah. Uh, and in Yemen, uh, the, the the difference with the Syrians is that there is uh, there were only and still only two uh, sources to get information. It's either the official channel of the Syrian regime, right, or uh, or the the uploaded videos that the Syrian protesters are. Filming, uh, uh. and uh, we can see them on the web or on the TV cha channels like uh, uh, Al Jazeera right. and, and other channels. Uh, actually, it started with with a sentence that uh, one of my friends uh, throw it uh, in in, uh, in a gathering, and he ta he told that uh, uh, the Syrians are shooting their own death. Mm. And uh, this sentence ag actually intrigued me, and mm. I started my my research and uh, and my shooting re as in recording. Yes, shooting films. as recording, yeah. of course, uh -huh. shooting their own death. But it's it's, it's a nice word because yeah. it plays with these two senses. Uh, and actually, there are I found that there are uh, several videos that are really very strong and violent at the same time. And it's worth uh, doing a reflection upon them. And these videos specifically, uh, you see like uh, from the point of view of, uh, of the filmmaker, or not filmmaker actually, sure. the, the protester who is shooting from a mobile phone. So a kind of so we can't point see, of view. So uh, we can't see uh, him. Right. I assume he's a man. And, uh, and you only see what he's seeing huh. and then suddenly he sees like a sniper or someone who has a gun like from those thugs of the regimes and shoot directly towards the lens and then there's a fall huh. so it's really very strong and uh, and if you take the the voice the sound track from it uh, digestic sound, of course, right. it's uh, it's a real sound. Of, if you take it off and you just look to the images, you don't understand anything. 
Mm. You just see like uh, like a street, and then like for example a tank. Then uh, you see like uh, flu images, motion, and motion, and, and yeah. you don't understand. And then black. But if you if you hear the the sound with it, then you understand that the bullet came straight to the lens or ah. to the to the uh, to the cameraman. I'm calling cameraman because yes, right. So, <laughs> uh, so I started uh, actually think about this uh, these videos, and uh, and actually this is something not uh, new in the sense that I started. Uh, uh, doing uh, works uh, on images and videos uh, in different uh, artworks. Uh, for example, in uh, three posters, yes, which I, I, I did the work on, on the video testimonies that uh, has been done by uh, Kamikaze uh, suicide bombers yes. from the Communist uh, Lebanese party. During the Lebanese Civil War? Or? Yeah, it yes. was during the Civil Lebanese War, but but it was, of course, it was uh, against the Israeli occupation. Right. Be, because the, especially after the invasion of Lebanon in right. 1982, so the, the resistance started, and it was a national resistance and secular resistance, uh, and not Islamic as it's now. Right, so and the and the and the resistors would record themselves. Often it started like uh, with with, uh, with a few uh, secular uh, political parties yeah. that they start to film themselves before heading to to this to, operation to commit suicide. Right. Uh, to do this uh, operation. They'd have a bomb attached to them or something. No, no, or not or at no, all. They are was... like uh, sitting um, with their uh, military clothes. Sometimes they are with the ordinary clothes. Oh, that's sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just facing the camera like this, and and actually was what was and a uh, flag behind. Oh, this, yes, this yes, is the first the flag piece of yours. Was I like, saw. like yes, the set, yeah. the setup of of the like a kind of a setup like, like a homemade homemade yes studio right that you don't know where is the location because of course it's an un undercover uh, resistance sure and but what was interesting at that time is that they start their uh, uh, their uh, video testimonies with a very uh, intriguing phrase which they start like i am the martyr comrade uh, right rabia mrue for example Kind of like I just did with this. Yes, yeah, so, so <laughs> it's uh, it's astonishing because huh. like uh, I am the martyr. It means that he's a martyr, right. or she is a martyr because there were female and males uh, who committed uh, such uh, operations. So I'm a martyr, but it's he's still or she's still not a martyr yet. Yes, uh, he, as declaring I'm dead right. in front of the camera, but we know. He or she will know that when we will watch they will the no video, longer. they will, they be, will be dead. Right. Right. So I started to uh, reflect upon these uh, videos, and I did the work with uh, uh, Elias Khoury, mm -hmm. uh, called Three Posters, and later on I did uh, uh, a work, kind of a lecture uh, performance uh, on Three Posters. Oh, so the original three posters was not a, perform a yeah. lecture performance. No, it was, no, it oh. was it was a, a performance, uh -huh. and uh, and later on I, I continued uh, uh, reflecting upon different sorts uh, of images and videos. Yeah. Uh, for example, in uh, the inhabitants of images, I I talked about street posters, uh, very strange posters. Uh, that appeared uh, in the city, and and then the pixelated revolution. So it's like a kind of continuity yeah. of, of this uh, uh, reflection that I started since uh, uh, since many years. Like uh, three posters. It was in 2000, and before I did the work with uh, a friend, uh, collaboration with uh, Tony Shakar. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was uh, called uh, Enter, Sir, We Are Waiting for You Outside. And it was about uh, the image of Palestine uh, in our heads, or right. 
Huh. or the image of Palestine in the media. It was mm. like in both mm. parallel. Right. Like the image that we inherited it from the older generation. So we were yeah. like thinking about this image, mm. the representation of Palestine. Right. Uh, so also it was about the image and videos. Uh, when, you, when you said about the pixelated revolution that it was interesting to remove the sound and in some ways right. that kind of create, in some ways, remove the context. Um, and then yeah. these images had a yeah. different life. Yeah. What is it about, could you go explain that a little further around the power of these images when they're removed from the political context? Or, because so often people today are referring, yeah. using these images to inform them in a reportage kind of uh, way. You're looking at it from an image as an artist. Yeah. and. But it's still very heated. I mean, it's such a, a hot moment. And yeah, actually, uh, uh, the pixelated uh, revolution. I I did like a kind of uh, like a tryout. Uh, mm -hmm. It was in Beirut. Yeah, I read about uh, it. Yes, and uh, there was uh, I. I didn't notice that there are that people will be really annoyed by these images. I thought that we we are all familiar. Because everyone's seen them yes. online. And, uh -huh. and some people, like, they came to me and they said, like, but you have to say that this, that this work contains violent images and we, maybe we don't want to see them. And then I looked at them and it's interesting because uh, these videos, you don't see blood, you don't see corpses, hmm. you don't see anything, you just... Uh, uh, you apply all that meaning. Yes, you, you, you create all this violent right. out of, actually it's the sound which is very violent mm. and not the images. And this is something interesting to, to think mm. about. To, mm. So I, uh, I, I did like now with the new version that I will show Saturday, uh, one of the videos, I, I put it without saying anything but, and without the sound. I, I took the sound out mm -hmm. and jo showed only the film, the video. And uh, it looks very uh, nice video. Hmm. Like, like uh, formally beautiful. Yeah, and it's like, uh, you see like uh, a street and it's a moving camera. Uh, and then, then there's a grass. Hmm. And the grass come out of focus and focused. Hmm. But in fact, there is like a sound that, that tells that there is a bullet that hit the cameraman and mm. the mobile phone uh, mm. uh, dropped yeah. drop, yeah. uh, onto the grass, onto right. the floor. Yeah. So this is very violent, actually, right. and, the, and the sound is very violent. Uh, so you're in some ways investigating perception and the meaning that we bring yeah. to what could yeah. be fairly abstract imagery. Right. Right. Um, and there is other layers, a lot of layers that I try to, uh, to think about in this, uh, in this work. Uh, like, uh, for example, there is, uh, there is one of uh, the main uh, questions uh, that everybody now is uh, trying to, to answer in mm -hmm. different manners. Like, are we allowed to talk about something, an event that is still going on? Uh, are we allowed ask, to yeah. take like a, an artwork that is, the event is still going on? And of course, like we all agree that we need the distance. Right. Uh, and the distance means really, literally a distance far from Geographic, uh, Geographic. Oh, I mean, but I mean, yeah, I'm sorry, but I it's linear time. distance Actually, in it's time. In time. Yeah. But with, with the time, geographically also, right. metaphorically, yeah. geographically it will be also far sure. from us. It will be apart from us, not, we are not but inside it. But you made a it. choice to not allow that distance in this particular work, to move in and make a work before that distance. Yes. Accrued, in part, to, to ask yourself this question, to explore what is that distance that's required and is it really required or, or exactly. what? Exactly. This, uh -huh. this is a question, what distance is required? Huh. And uh, 
Have you made conclusions yet? Of course, uh, there's <laughs> of course there's no answer. It, right. And, yeah. and, and the interesting is that just to, to keep the question open. Right. And there is no answer, like because like uh, we are different individuals, yeah. and everyone uh, has his own uh, or her own uh, ways of uh, yeah. working and uh, capturing things. And uh, people needs time. Some people uh, they are fast with uh, ideas coming. Sure. But it's, you don't, there's not like a rule that, sure. like, but, uh, but still, still I notice that when, when you do a work about an event that's still going on, uh, still, it's if, let's say, if the artist created this necessary distance, mm -hmm to talk about this event that is still going on. Sometimes the audience are not uh, ready to hear about it right. because they still in. There's too much emotion. They are still in this. Right. Uh, so sometimes uh, they don't accept uh, like to talk in a very cool, let's say, sure. cool manner. Right. Just like uh, talking uh, and uh, doing theories and in a calm, uh, state whether whether people in 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 in, in, in the event are, are dying, dying, dying for example, right. like people it's, feel that it's a luxury that's not affordable exactly, intellectually exactly right. and but but for me like the only place that uh, we should do such kind of provocation is in an art field in mm. the art world right uh, because for me art is is this place where one can raise question one should provoke uh, oneself the artist himself herself should provoke right uh, the self before provoking the audience uh, put doubts questions mm. and uh, like uh, to do this challenge otherwise it's not interesting if you have already the answers sure I'm, so this is why, like with the pixelated revolution, I'm still not sure. I yeah. still have a lot of doubts about my work. Yeah. I'm still like hesitating if what I'm doing is good or bad, or do yeah. I have the right to do it now, or should I? But whenever I'm asking such kind of questions that really uh, make me disturb, in, in disturb you, me right. exactly, I feel that yes, what I'm doing is good because this is what art should aim for, mm. is just to shake the norms, right. to talk about taboos, to, 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 uh, to let people think about uh, matters and to share with, with, with another uh, person your thoughts, your uh, doubts, your skeptical uh, matters, etc. In a way, you could, one could argue that it um, opens the world a little broader for the society in that once war erupts or a, a violent conflict is happening, it's almost everyone's emotional and intellectual energy needs to be applied, ends up getting applied into that conflict. Yeah. But that's also why I'm sure it was controversial to show the work in Beirut because people wanted you to be on a side or advocating in some yeah, way. Yeah, but sometimes, or, yeah, yeah, but, but, uh, but, of course, like in, in the pixelated revolution, I show my position immediately, yeah, like right. directly, because I can't be with. Uh, <laughs> so you get that out of the I way. I can't be yeah. with the regime, like sure, right. uh, killing yeah, yeah. people. Obviously, I can't like defend this. But right. of course, what I try to do is like uh, to think about uh, uh, this phenomena uh, that the protesters, how they are doing their films, mm -hmm. uh, talk about them. Uh, and by doing so, there are questions that coming uh, to the protesters' uh, videos. Mm. So uh, it's, uh, it's a kind of uh, also uh, questioning my position. Sure. So I'm, I, I'm, if, there's no, if, if the position is clear, let's say, uh, the political position is clear that I'm with, si with this side, right. but then I have to question my side. I have to yeah. put doubts on right. my right. side, on my position to, to think about it. So, uh, and this is what I'm doing. And this is, I think this is what bothers. It's not because I'm taking the position of the 
uh, of the Syrians' revolution. Or, no, uh, right. No, because I'm maybe because I'm doing this uh, this kind of an intellectual uh, uh, active or intellectual act yeah. uh, w when people are still dying. So <laughs> because sometimes with urgencies, uh, states. Uh, like uh, the the work of the mind is not allowed right. because now we have like it's like a totalitarian Total, yeah. uh, regimes uh, that's restricting a, a way of thinking. Yes, like certain... now we have to stop everything, right. and now we have this battle. We have to be one hand one unified society in the face of the enemy. And right. this is a strategy actually that, especially in the Arab world, especially in Lebanon and Syria, it's always the case. Like we are always asked to postpone thinking, questions. to postpone questions, because we are still in a state of war. There is right. an enemy very close to us, Israel, yeah. and we should postpone all our interior problems or our interior questions for the sake of this Would you say battle, it, go, it goes so for far? this war. And of course, it's the, 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 the authorities and the regime are taking advantage of this to keep themselves in the position of power. Right. And uh, mm. so Almost it removes a part of the humanity that one can bring yes, to yeah, life. Yeah. And uh, did you find so for, for the for this is what the idea is that uh, during like uh, in such events uh, sometimes there are like uh, some people that they are also using uh, unconsciously uh, unaware of the danger of this uh, idea that they tell you but they this the event is still going on you right. we are not allowed to think about it in this way right ethically it's not good but why not? It's not about ethical now. It's about really asking questions and right. uh, thinking. And, and for me, uh, thinking uh, is, is, uh, the highest is, is like to, to highlight your, uh, your state as a human being mm. par excellence. Mm. So we are now thinking, and this is actually mm. what distinguishes us from animals that we are allowed to think not well, only to feel right what what would you say um since you've opened the work and showed it in beirut and now taken it to new york um you coming into the work was asking yourself so many questions what's the most distinct or maybe profound question that surfaced that you hadn't thought about before open before starting to show the work to some people around the piece uh, first of all, when 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 I carry any work from Beirut to, to another to another country outside Beirut, uh, I I insist that I should present it as it is as it was presented in Beirut, ah. so th I ah. don't change anything, and I uh, I believe that uh, any person in any spot in the world could understand what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Even if uh, someone in Minneapolis, for example, does not know anything about Lebanon. Mm. And I'm talking about Lebanon, or I'm talking about Syria, right. and this person doesn't know anything about Syria. I think that he can understand what I'm talking about. Because I think uh, art and artwork is not to simplify uh, matters right. to someone who doesn't know. I'm not coming outside of Beirut to anywhere to simplify, not to teach anyone about mm -hmm. Beirut or, right. or the region. Uh, no, I have uh, a story that has uh, inside it uh, questions, doubts, and I think these, uh, what I want to share with anyone, mm -hmm. and even if there are a lot of nuances uh, will be missed, no matter, because mm -hmm. I think the, the, the audience is 
intelligent right. as much as I'm intelligent. Mm -hmm. It's not, if not more than me. Mm. So I think they can manage with, with the material that I'm uh, yeah. presenting to them and they can deal with their own matters that I don't know. Right. Uh, they can translate what I'm talking about in their own ways mm -hmm. and uh, the, the questions will be also transformed to their circumstances uh, and it seems you know. almost ironically, you know, very often we think of work that deals with complex subject matter is that the more you know going in and the yeah. more invested you are in a topic, yeah. the, mo the more you'll receive from a performance. But in this instance, the distance of, say, going to New York or Minneapolis with Pixelated Revolution, yeah. the distance may actually allow people to come to it yeah. more open in some way, would you say? Or, uh, I didn't get it. Uh, um, well, because the the remove from Beirut yes. of presenting this work, yeah. does that, by nature, give people um, more uh, openness to it because they're not? It's not so charged. Right. They're more receptive right. to the artistic right. exploration. Right. 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 Yeah. right. No, I, I agree. I agree with this. Uh, what about the form uh, that you you chose? The, per, the the lecture performance you've used before. Other other performance artists have kind of created performance work in the form of an almost academic lecture. Yeah. Why why is that of appeal? Are you? Does it set? Does it? Or just why do you approach that form? Actually, it's, uh, I, I prefer to call them uh, non-academic lectures uh -huh. uh, instead uh -huh. of lecture performances. Uh -huh. uh, the difference being? For me, like, the difference is uh, simply like performance. When I use the word performance, um, I think I prefer, like this is a personal uh, thing that I prefer when I use the word, per, the word performance is that I, I have also to treat the space, the whole space, uh -huh. uh, I have to, to put some question, uh, to put in question the space itself, mm. the relation with the audience between the stage and the audience. And with these uh, non-academic lectures, actually it has uh, the same uh, relation, the, 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 the conventional uh, relation between uh, a lecturer on facing uh, yeah. uh, the audience. So it doesn't question the space or the relationship between the, the stage and uh, the audience. Uh, the way, say, place. missing employee does. Yeah, the way, like with missing employee, it's different. There are like, uh, it's a performance, it's a right. lecture, it's a, a theater performance right. for me, it's a yeah. theater. And, uh, and there is like, a, one of the main question is, the relation between the event that is going on on the stage and uh, the absence of this event on the stage and mm. how we represent this event. Right. And where should the audience look? Because the event is uh, shifted actually from the stage to their place. It's, right. it's happening in, this, in the seats, in yeah. the audience seats. Right. I'm sitting there and I'm doing all my actions yeah. in, 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 the, in, this, in their place. Right. And we are trans transmitted it uh, through. immediately through the camera and the video projector to the stage. So they, they have two choices. It's either to look, let's say, to the theater, right. which is shifted to their place, huh. but then it will be difficult to look because they have to look like like this, yeah, particularly like this, in, in a like house this. maybe like this, which is a little yeah. hard to look way yeah. up and things. Or yeah. in order to see the theater that I'm doing, they should uh, look obliquely, which is like through the screen, hmm. which is placed on the stage. Right. Uh, so this is like one of uh, one of uh, the ideas that uh, I. I uh, I started to reflect upon uh, is that how we do theater today uh, is still possible to do theater in the same manner that we have done mm. before. Uh, do you make theater in a, in a non-mediated way? In, in the uh, sometimes yes, sometimes yeah. yes, but it's, there is al always something that make it uh, not really 
uh, theater. Like, right. uh, like there is something uh, fishy we say, yes. in, right. in, in the form. <laughs> right. Like, but it's not really theater. It's theater, but not really theater. Like, uh, I always try to put this doubts that I have on theater. Hmm. I have doubts. I have question yeah. uh, on how I should do theater, and I don't have answers yet. But for me now, like uh, maybe uh, one one of the things is that to put my questions inside the work itself. Hmm. So the questions are in a loud voice in front of the audience on theater. Hmm. Sometimes I put them directly, sometimes... This way, the way you um, put your questions about truth at the start... For example, of, yes. ...of missing employee. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. mm. and, uh, and of course, like, uh, it's a live transmission. Right, this, sure. Uh, yeah. uh, during the whole performance, and at some point, it shifted to a recorded... Uh, you disappear. Disappear, yeah. and my image is still there. So it's also like, also to put doubts about this... This link, this right. uh, transmission that it's like also it could be manipulated. Like it's sure. always I try to, to, to build something and then uh, try to, to deconstruct it. Right. Uh, yeah, because I'm, I'm afraid of uh, structures like to build structures. I'm, mm. uh, I prefer to keep, uh, keep things open or mm. to postpone answers like to keep them. And by postponing answers, this will allow us to, to think more, to have mm. more time to think about things um, and to, to uh, explore more, mm. uh, to go deep and to go in other directions. Do you continue to feel that theater, you've experimented and, and other people who we've supported and out there and much of the theater that we present is yeah. is an exploration of form around what can theater still be today yeah. given how media is so prevalent and what movies and films and online material can do um, do you anticipate that you will continue to utilize theater as a form that interests you? And is there still further exploration as a form that is relevant to our society? I'm, uh, I'm, like for me, I'm, I'm doing theater and I, I studied theater and this is my specialty. Yeah. And uh, as I said that I, I, uh, I, I start to question theater and put doubts on what I'm doing and uh, I postponed the answer, uh, mm. the answers, and by doing so, actually, I started to to go in other directions. Like I'm now doing uh, visual art work. Yes, right. And uh, sometimes videos. Uh, sometimes films. Sometimes yeah. films, and for me, every time I'm doing something, in in uh, in different medium or in different disciplines, uh, I don't feel that I'm. I'm betraying uh, theater. You're right. No, for me, it's actually, it's, it's my research or my way to, to find my answers hmm. about theater. Huh. So it's still about theater. When I do like an exhibition, uh, I'm not questioning uh, the visual art field. I'm huh. not putting my questions on, uh, on museums uh, and... Uh, Paintings and, and yeah. I don't really. I'm not specialist with the history of art. Hmm. I'm, I'm dealing with theater, so it's like, for me personally, it's huh. still related directly to theater. And for huh. me, it's another way to do theater. Ah, interesting. Uh, even if it's in, in a white cube or it's yes. uh, without my presence, and it's go for one month, uh, and it has the same form and structure as an exhibition. Uh, but for me, it's still like a kind of a theater piece. Hmm. Have, have there been things as you've done more work in gallery spaces and without the, the presence of your own body um, and, and, and aliveness that you have gained from that experience, that form of theater, theater in a gallery, the way you've described it, that have informed your live work when you're on a stage? Have, have there been things that you've learned in that yes. research? Uh, yes, actually, for example, one of the works uh, uh, is called uh, Grandfather, Father and Son. Uh, 
In fact, that was yeah. originally we talked about Hussein, yes. and that might have been right. a piece in exactly. the theater. But exactly. you, you kind of made a gallery installation. Yeah, and for, it. Uh, for example, with this piece, like I wrote a text, hmm. and uh, and this text actually it's uh, it's made out of fragments uh, that you can put them in 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 the way you want to. Right. Like each each one can put them in different line, uh -huh. and even you can uh, uh, skip like two fragments, three mm. fragments. It's no matter. Right. Even you can take one fragment. It's still okay. So it's like fragments of uh, uh, a biography. Yeah. And uh, they are spread, and you you decide from where you start, from here, from there. Because time is not is yeah, completely it's, radically yes, different. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But it's a theater for me. It's a theater because ah. it's also there's a, a narrative, a story, and right. uh, but it's nonlinear anymore. Ah. Uh, ah. And there is uh, like a presence of uh, props mm. and uh, a kind of a set there. Mm. And there's mm. this text uh, with. Uh, with someone who is telling this story. Hmm. And you know this someone, it's me. Hmm. And people can, I think visitors can uh, uh, make, make the, a draw of- Make of, their own play. Yes, uh, yes, yeah. out of this. So right. it's like a play that uh, could be directed by each visitor. Hmm. And which is interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Right. And uh, I don't know how one can, uh, Take this and put it really in, in theater, for example. Right. But but it's still like a question how I can bring it and make it in a live sense. Maybe uh, maybe it's not worth to do it. Maybe it's mm. worth. I don't uh, know. Like, do you find it interesting that when visual art curators and gallery and museum people look at your work in a gallery, do they look at it? Um, in a different way than theater people would. Uh, I think they 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 look at it in a different way, and I'm yeah. I'm I'm happy about this because uh, this make it more rich for me yeah. because it's uh, of course like when I when I I see a work by uh, a visual artist, I try to take it to my world, to my uh -huh. world, uh -huh. to the theater world, to the performing art world. Right. And I think like it's it's also on the other side like if someone. Uh, from the visual art field or uh, cinema, makes see, a like, performance. Performance, and they will took it to their uh, yeah. field. And it's interesting because there's there's a very hot debate going on in America right now in the art world yeah. around visual artists making more and more interested in making theater works, mm -hmm. and theater artists, you know, having their work. And yeah. and, and there's. Um, is uh, there's an essay that Andy Horowitz wrote on CultureBot um, examining on why so many, even those in experimental theater, go to see visual art performance and are disappointed because um, of, the, of the value structure that we approach the different yeah. work from. And yeah. uh, it seems like you've found a way to be open to, to bo both worlds and not necessarily yeah, use. I, I, the notion, for instance, of visual, vis the visual art world often is very suspicious around questions of authenticity and scripted performance, that really once something is set and scripted and repeated, there's a question that's often raised of like, well, is it what, what's, you know, that it's lost its performance art authenticity of the, yeah. of the moment. And your work is obviously scripted, uh, and, but do you explore those questions or do people in the visual art world challenge you around those yeah, questions? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's an interesting moment, I think. Uh, do, do you, um, do you find that in um, your work here, say, with Missing Employee um, that we had just been talking about, um, y there was a, a lot of work happening in the 80s. In fact, the Spalding Gray Award that you received from the Consortium of U.S. Places, named after the monologue of Spalding Gray, who had a, a desk similar to this, would come and sit down, as well yeah. as today, you know, yeah. Daniel Kitson or Mike Daisy or others. You've yeah. chosen in your mind, in some ways you could say Missing Employee is a monologue, but you're one yeah. step removed and mediated. Yeah, yeah. Ha is that, um, has, has that, what is it that, um, that, that, have you always made your work that 
that there's that mediated um, aspect. And would you had you ever done just straight yeah, yeah, yeah. personal, sto you know, monologues? In that way? Yeah, it's, sometimes it's not monologues. Sometimes it's monologues. Uh, for example, uh, and it's always this uh, mediated. Uh, Relationship. Relationship with, with theater and with representation. Like, for example, in, uh, in Who's Afraid of Representation, right. Uh, right. there is uh, like a kind of presenting uh, in, the, uh, in the first uh, tense, like I, for, uh, right. of the, the, the body artists in the 60s, oh, yes. 70s. Yes, I'd love so to see So, for example, this, like uh, saying like, I, Chris Burden, or I'm right. uh, 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 Bob Flanagan, yeah. I, I, in, in this year I did this work, etc. So it's in the first tense we use, monologues, and it, it's always uh, like there's a screen facing the audience, and uh, actually Lena is playing uh, the role of all these artists. Uh. So once she uh, go behind the screen, then her image is... Is ap appears on on the screen mm. uh, in in uh, right. one to one scale, yes. facing the audience, and talking to the audience. But in fact, in reality, it's she is recorded. facing. She's giving her back to the audience right. and facing the wall, mm. and uh, her image appears as if she's addressing to them. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is another monologue actually, which is uh, it's a Lebanese criminal. Mm. Uh, who committed a crime in, in Lebanon, and I play this role, and I'm always coming, uh, standing in front of the screen, hmm. facing the audience right. in flesh and uh, blood, yeah. and uh, uh, and talking. And for me, it was like, it was like this uh, membrane, which is the screen, the screen, yeah. uh, that uh, separate theater from non-theater right. or, yeah. or from the Video other theory. suggestion yeah. of theater. Right. So, huh. uh, and of course it's, it's related also to how we write history because all these uh, actions and artworks that has been done by those artists, it's now in the history. Right. It's, it's in a book. It's everywhere. You can read them. It belongs to the history. Right. So in this uh, way uh, I prefer to put them uh, on an image. Hmm. So you see them in, as an image. And uh, Lina is always talking uh, with another mediator, which is the microphone. Hmm. So you hear her voice through speakers. While I come, actually I tell a story of this uh, criminal, which right. is based on a true story, but it does not yet belong to history. Hmm. So it belongs at least for now and here, which is the, the characteristic of performing mm -hmm. arts, like mm -hmm. of, of performance, of theater, right. which is now and here is going the action. Ah. So I'm, I'm talking from my belly. I'm trying to project my voice. Uh, I'd have no... Uh, Amplification, yes. microphone. Yeah. While Lina, she's doing all this ah. behind the screen and, and the, the, ah. the audience should look at her through, uh, through the screen, through the yeah. image. Huh. So it was like to put these two right. in order to, to confront them hmm. in a way. What year did you make that, that work? Uh, sorry? What year did you make that uh, work? It was in 2005, ah. this, ah. Uh, this uh, one. Also, there's another work that we did in 2008 or 2009, I forgot. It's called Photoroman, Photoromance. Mm -hmm. And, and with this work, actually, we, we did the whole piece uh, in stop-motion uh, images mm. Uh, mm. as a movie, but it's stop-motion. Mm. And it is uh, like comics. Yes. You see, like, frame it's by like frame. Like a flip book. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. it's like... So, uh, uh, Lina is uh, uh, saying all the dialogues as, as a monologue. Mm. Mm? Uh, and she's playing the images, so there are like uh, the, the story is, and the action is through images right. going on. But paradoxically, it's fixed right. images sure. still. It's still, and she is saying dialogues, but huh. as they are a monologue. Hmm. 
Hmm. So also it's another way to to deal with uh, with theater sure. uh, and to put our questions in theater. Is this kind of a formal exploration of the form of theater? Um, uh, is it prevalent throughout the Middle East, or uh, say, or is no, no, it's not necessary. No, no, not at all. Actually, yeah. uh, this. Uh, No, not at all. I yeah. can't tell this because uh, I started uh, in 1997. I start to to really question what I'm doing, and uh, Lena as well. We were together doing this uh, journey. Right. You were doing more traditional theater. Yes, and film yes. Before. And uh -huh. in 1997, we stopped and we start try to do in another way. And it was still physical theater, actually, mm. theater that uh, depends on body right. and movement. Yeah. And also, we we we, we did like uh, Lena did the work and I did the work, uh, and it was very hard physically for the actors. Mm. And then we were also not convinced. Then mm. in the in the following day, I did this work, enter, sir, we are waiting for you outside. Mm. And it was like a very radical uh, uh, break. work, a break, uh, which I decided that, uh, okay, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not uh, forced and I'm not obliged that in every uh, work that I will do in, in every theater, I have to prove that I'm a talented director huh. and I'm, I'm a talented actor and I have to show all my skills, and <laughs> I have to <laughs> surprise the audience right. with uh, big with show. effects, yes, with big right. shows. And I'm, I'm, I already did, and uh, yeah. I have a lot of articles that they said that I'm talented. Yes. So I don't need to prove <laughs> it anymore. <laughs> so let's do something else. So f it was the first time, for example, that there was no uh, costumes. Hmm. Uh, the actors uh, are in real names, with their real names. We were four on stage, and uh, and I start to break some rules that I I had I carried them from my uh, studies. And, yeah. For example, that we should not give our backs to the audience. Right, yeah. We should always project. Right. So I, I, I <laughs> it was the whole performance with our backs to the audience. Uh, I decided that this time I should use a microphone. Uh, and to to talk uh, uh, yeah. in, in a very uh, normal way, not to to huh. make any effort. Right. Even like uh, I decided to use uh, chairs with wheels, huh. so like we are yes. doing <laughs> the minimum effort, the minimum physical effort on stage, and and other huh. things that I I did. Were in you this piece. influenced in some of those thoughts around you know work? from U.S. or Europe, like the Worcester Group or Richard Foreman or some of the experimental... I, I didn't know Worcester Group oh, at that uh -huh, time, actually. Uh -huh. I have to say this. Uh, uh, it, 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 was, it came really from... Uh, Your own desire from to... Just, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, yeah. But, you know, when you talked about your skills as an actor, in thinking about Missing Employee last night, in some ways, there is... Um, you play with that line because you're tr such a good performer and you're very charming on stay on video uh, live <laughs> and in some ways you know you carry still that kind of the power of the old theater theatrically but yeah. mediated one yeah. step removed yeah, yeah. because uh, yeah, could yeah. you ever imagine for instance missing employee being played by someone else doing the show or uh, I, I i i never uh, imagined this uh, yeah. And I sometimes I, I think about I I asked Lena one time uh, if she can uh, play this role huh. instead of me. Yeah. And uh, she she told me she told me that uh, maybe it's not a good idea. It's it's about you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm uh, not sure because yeah. actually we did the work also another work uh, other than uh, photo romans that we collaborated together uh -huh. we did another uh, work together and we should uh, say lena is your wife and yes uh, she's my wife partner she has her own theater work and, yes uh, yes and sometimes we do in collaboration yeah. everything the directing uh, writing uh -huh. and one of the pieces that we did uh, it was called biografia and it's a pun on uh, biography biographia yes. right Bio biographia so mm -hmm. biography right uh, uh -huh. Anyway, in this work, uh, 
Actually, it's based on uh, Lena. Uh, she's the actress, mm. and it's about herself, and it's a monologue as well. Real life biography? No, her? not real. It's yeah, yeah. It's fiction, but yes. also with with uh, with our question on theater, what we are passing through, and it has a very specific and really uh, strong, at least for me, very strong structure. Hmm. And uh, we have never imagined that uh, someone, a director, will take the text and uh, do another uh, uh, production, another, production yeah. and huh. another vision of it. And it happened uh, last year huh. um, that, uh, that uh, it has been done hmm. in another production. And it was in a different way. Did you see it? Um, uh, I did not see it uh, live. I, yeah. I saw it on video. And uh, it's very interesting, actually. Huh. Huh. Uh, I can't say that I prefer this or I prefer that. Because yeah. it's different work now. Right. It's not my work anymore. Yeah, sure. right. It's not Lena's work. It's uh, it's right. the director's work huh. now. It belongs to someone else. Yeah. And this is very interesting. And yeah. uh, and uh, huh. maybe you are right. Uh, missing employee should be done by someone else huh. other than me, and in different way, not uh, yes. in this right. form that huh. I presented it. It's funny talking to Lena last night about missing employee. Um, I asked, and actually when I first saw the show, I didn't realize, I was uncertain whether the story, the real story of the missing employee and all the, all the, the newspaper clips and everything actually was real at all, whether there was really anything like that ever really happened. Because we're living in a time where there's so many un theatrical performance works that use unreliable narrators or people recreate a, a, yeah. a mythical history. And right. Does it matter to you whether people believe any that, that, that it was a, in any way a real occurrence or whether or not? Or how no, it? actually, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's one of the strategies actually that we we uh, we we used uh, in our works, me and Lena, yeah. which is like in a way to put these doubts right. on on what we are doing. Uh, between fiction and real. Right. Where is the fiction starts, where ends. Right. Where the real starts, yeah. where it uh, stops. Uh, and actually, it's not... Uh, we, we use this strategy not to cheat the audience. Right. Uh, to tell them, oh, you believed us, but it was not true. Or, oh, you think that it was not true, but it's true. No, not at all. Right. It's just to put this question about any narrative. Sure. To put this uh, doubt or this uh, conscious about history itself. Who writes history? Right. How we write history. How we write, uh, how we describe an event. What is a witness? Mm. Uh, is a witness is really uh, describing what really happened? Or like the the memory and right. the, the illusion uh, and or the characteristics the and the psychological state play all these levels play a role in how we tell right. uh, an event that we witnessed it yeah. in our own eyes. Yeah. Huh? Uh, so it's all about this. So for me, uh, there is no truth. There is no false. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, what what I'm hearing or what I'm watching. I take it as its reality hmm. by by itself. I take it by itself, and I I think about it as a whole, without uh, like uh, trying to distinguish between fake and uh -huh. uh, does it go all real the way and unreal? Yeah, because this is, this is a big danger right. when you start to do this. Like, where is? The truth, where where is lying, where is not right. lying, where is like sure. uh, fictionalized the story, where is true, then uh, this creates this binary right. uh, thing, and then there will be like truth and untruth, black and white, yeah. good and bad, which is very dangerous. Mm. So there there's a range of colors between those huh. uh, two colors, right? And uh, and for me, it's just that. You take it as it is and think about it. 
right. whether it's true or not true. It's not matter. What I'm proposing to you now, this is the story that I have. Right. So take it. Yes. Right. And, and this is what I do when someone tell me, tells me uh, a story or, or uh, describe an event or uh, tell even a lie. Hmm. Like he's saying that this is a lie. I want to tell you. Right. I take it as a fact that, yeah. that it's a real story now. He's telling me a, a lie. Right. And I believe this, even if, huh. if this is... And it's, it's interesting um, in the subje subjective uh, nature of truth itself, which is, I think, a part of what you're examining. <clears throat> I have a friend who comes out of the science advocacy realm and just wrote a yeah. book that I just finished about the nature uh, of our current times and the distrust of science, yeah. and particularly around climate change. And he makes this argument that um, both the fundamentalist Christian and other fundamentalist religions denial of science um, and in his perspective that truth which is empirical from his point of view and the postmodernists yeah. uh, artists and uh, are are leading to, to a culture that no longer believes scientific fact and therefore no longer can qu will question things like is there truly climate change and things uh -huh. like that do you ever look, think about those questions around the kind of subjectivity around truth and then its relationship to attempting to, uh, you know, say, belief in something like science and that, and that sort of thing? Uh, it's, it's a complicated it's a very big question, question. But, <laughs> but, uh, but, but what I was trying actually to, to, to say, maybe this will yeah. answer your yeah. question, is that uh, I believe that there is not an absolute truth not an absolute uh, right. uh, uh, result. Like, um, there's always something that can shake this truth, right. wherever it's strong. And for me, like, uh, truth exists in, in all the versions that we can get. Hmm. So, uh, for example, in Lebanon, we have uh, a lot of versions about the civil war, right? Or we have also a lots, a lot of versions about the meaning of our country, why uh, Lebanon existed, and each political party, each religious and uh, confessional uh, uh, community yeah. or faction has their own, its own Metallic. version. Yes mythology or, or uh, story or right. history, etc. And of course, they always say that my history or my story is the only truth. The only truth. And yeah. they don't listen to the others right. because this is fake. Yes. This is not true. It's forged or uh, not forged. It's fake. Yes. Uh, uh, so for me, no, uh, I hear this. I hear that. I hear that. I hear that. And I put them all together. Hmm? Mm. They make an image. But it's also not a complete image hmm. of the history of Lebanon or the history of the civil right. war. Right. But all of these versions together gives a wider vision about, right. and we can understand more. So I believe in this version, and I believe in this version, believe this in version. It's, it's true, and this is true, and this is true. But it's true in the discourse of this Right. Party or community. And this is true in this, the discourse of this. I have to be also aware of the, of the discourse behind mm. each uh, group. And I can put them together. And then we can study uh, history in, in another way by, by just uh, confronting them together and right. without accusing yeah. anyone of uh, inventing or, uh, right. or not inventing, etc. Just to put them in order to understand more. And mm. as much as you can collect versions and put them together, as much you can wider the vision and you can be closer to what might be a truth. Mm. But I think it's an impossible task to collect all versions right. in, in this uh, universe, in this world, about one event. Yes. So there's still one that is missed. Right. And there, so the truth is always not complete. Right. 
So but, this my my theory, which was actually, in many ways was really yeah. the essence of looking uh, looking yeah. for the missing employee. And yeah. do you feel like in this moment that we live in, where it seems like fundamentalism of many stripes is on the rise, that that increases the importance of the role for the arts as the kind of unbiased um, examiner of these multiple truths uh, of of kind of keeping. This keeping the thinking open enough um, to allow there to be a counterbalance to the to the fundamental the very the various camps of fundamentalism that exists today. I, I think uh, even if, it's, if not the world is going into yeah. more and more fundamental fundamentalist, I think the role of art for me it's always uh, to put this confrontation. Mm -hmm. to question uh, history and uh, truth, uh, to put doubts. Uh, mm. uh, and uh, actually, what is important is to ask a real question. Mm. And by, by saying this, I mean that when I have a question and I, 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 I share it with the audience, it should really that I don't have an answer. Mm. I'm not hiding the answer. Otherwise, if I have the answer, I'm just asking the question. It's it become a kind of activism, right? And then, like, I'm just like there's a subliminal thing. Uh, and for me, like, when you ask questions without answer, this will allow each one of the ad audience to formulate his or her own answer or reflection. Uh, and by doing so, also we deal with the audience as individuals, not right. as a mass huh. of people. Right. Well, Rabia, thank you so much. Thank you. Great <laughs> pleasure to have yeah, you yeah. here.